We're starting the Watts link today. And because simplicity is boring, we're gonna make it far more complicated than it needs to be while making it easy to understand. This should be fun. Hey Garage Fabbers, it's Man Candy with Man Candy's Creations. A Watts link is an axle locating system like a pan hard bar, but rather than forcing the axle to follow an arc, the Watts link allows the axle to move up and down in a much straighter manner. It has three main components, two link bars and a propeller. That's another one of those terms that's not really a term. The propeller isn't a propeller. It doesn't propel anything. It just looks like a propeller to me. Really, it's just another link. The first Watts link I built in 2008 was on my V8 Dodge D50. I named D350 because it was a D50, but it had a 350. D350. Yeah, it was stupid. That Watts link was cobbled together using a bunch of old Toyota parts. The propeller was a wheel hub and the link bars were rear control arms from a Lexus. That's what happens when you learn to weld before you learn to make parts. The propeller was held over the differential cover by a piece of steel tubing I found that was formed into an arc. This Frankenstein of a Watts link worked great and I learned some stuff from it. I learned that the propeller wasn't a propeller so the bearing wasn't necessary. It moves about the same amount as a link bar so a polyurethane bushing would work just fine. Also, I learned that the adjustments on the Lexus control arms Brilliant. Those allowed me to fine tune the location of the axle left and right between the bed sides. I will definitely incorporate adjustments on this one. And I learned that the arc was an easy and effective way of mounting the propeller. I won't be doing that again. What? Repeating stuff is just work for me. Doing stuff I haven't done before is far more fun, so here's a rough plan. It's just a rough plan because I'm not sure how to do it yet. I want to build a steel differential cover that will fit over the factory cover. This diff cover is what the Watts Link propeller will be attached to. It's got to be a pretty rigid cover because it's got to keep the axle from ripping out from under the truck under 7 G's of cornering force. Okay, that's, that's not going to be a thing, but you get the point. I'm going to use the factory diff cover to make a template for the bolt ring. The factory cover has this bead roll on the outer edge that hangs over the edge of the differential housing. I don't want my cover to hang over because hangovers suck. Also, it doesn't look real good. So I'm gonna just take it off. I thought a flap disc would make quick work of it, but surprise, it's aluminum. If you didn't know, aluminum is a softer material and it'll quickly gum up your stuff. So things like flap discs, cut off wheels, carbide burrs and files get so packed with aluminum, they stop working. Luckily, they make all those tools specifically for aluminum and they're really good to keep on hand. I decided to cut the bead off with a cutoff wheel made for aluminum and then smoothed it out with a fine flap disc also made for aluminum. That's better. I'm gonna make a wood version of the bolt ring. This will serve as a template to make the steel one, but it'll also help me confirm the ring doesn't contact any of the moving parts inside the diff. I haven't replaced the jigsaw that grenaded on me in the last episode, so I'm still using a steel cutoff wheel for wood. I don't hate it. It's fast and it smells like a campfire. I am just winging this thing. I've got no blueprints or measurements to go off of, just a basic image in my head. So I started by connecting the bolt holes to create a sort of tic-tac-toe board. The bolt ring on the original cover is an inch wide all the way around. So I figured if I keep my ring the same, we should be good on clearance. The center section won't be around because it's made from several straight pieces. So I predict it'll look more like an octagon. Starting with the top, the bottom, and the sides, I drew straight lines at the one inch mark. I realized in order to maintain the one inch border at the corners, I had to move the vertical lines in a little. Now I can connect all four corners and there's that octagon. That's not confusing at all. Maybe if I scribble out all the lines that don't matter. <laughs> That's even worse.
Wow, I was expecting to have to do some trimming, but this ring is already perfect. Now I need to make this piece 3D, like a turtle shell, starting with the vertical and horizontal sections, and then filling in the four triangle pieces later. I'd like to make the first piece out of a single strip of metal. I could start with the horizontal piece, but if I start with the vertical piece, I can make sure it clears the ring gear. I need to start with a strip of steel that's four inches wide and an unknown length. I don't have a press break yet, and there's no way my finger break will bend this 3 16 inch steel. So here's a quick tip. If you score the metal most of the way through with a cutoff wheel, you can bend it by hand. You'll have to run a weld bead along the cut, but it'll get the job done. Another benefit to this is if you need a very sharp bend. A press brake produces a slightly radius bend. So far, so good. Just needs a little trim. I'm gonna use the angle finder to try and match both bends so the top of the turtle shell will be flat. Oh. Yay. Well, I just trimmed a little bit off of the edges because this was way too far away from the ring gear. Apparently I trimmed off way too much because now we're touching the ring gear. Now I gotta figure out how to fix it. The easiest fix would be to make this plate out of something thick, like half inch, but I don't have half inch. I could also build up the edges a little bit with some extra metal, but I think that might look like ass. So I think the only real option is to start over. Thousands of tears later. There it is. Here's take two. I wasn't gonna make you watch the whole thing all over again. And I think I might be able to use some of the steel from the old one for the side plates. So it wasn't a total waste. I have already seen that the wood ring fits and all the holes line up. So it's time to transfer that to steel. I won't be using the template to drill the holes or cut out the center. So I'll mark the holes with a center punch and trace around the template. I will use the template to cut the outside edge, but first I need to remove 16 of an inch around the edge to account for the width of the tip of my plasma torch. The inside is just a series of straight cuts, so I'll just use a straight edge. I started the holes by enlarging the center punch marks with a small drill bit, and then my camera went dead. So it looks like the holes just magically appeared. Probably better that way. How many times can you watch holes being drilled on a YouTube video? Before I do any serious welding, I'm gonna tack everything in place. Da! <laughs> you thought you were gonna make it through an entire Garage Fab video without seeing cardstock, huh? Clearly, you don't know me at all. Oh, no, no, no. Seriously? Ha <laughs> ha! My dad always said, why do you waste your time with those stupid sticks? Use a fork like a real man. Well, look at me now, dad. I'm just kidding. I never met my dad. I'm just kidding again. Oh, come on!
So I finished all four triangle pieces for the corners and I just wanted to show you up close that on each triangle, I beveled the edge a little bit, trying to get the gaps on the corner pieces to match the gaps where we scored it and bent the metal earlier. The thought is that if all the gaps are exactly the same, when I fill these gaps with weld, all the weld beads will be uniform, super even, and it'll just look super professional. Uh, we'll see how that looks. I'm ready to weld this thing up. I've got the plate completely bolted down. This 3 16th metal is, it's not very thick. I don't think it needs to be very thick because this whole thing is gonna make the entire assembly really rigid. But what I'm worried about while I'm welding is that the 3 16th inch plate is gonna warp. So I just put in all the bolts and I hope that's just gonna hold everything together. And once everything cools, I can take all the bolts out and it should be perfectly flat. So here's to hoping. <laughs> What I ended up doing was just tacking everything to the ring and then fully welding up just the turtle shell. That way it could bend and contort and distort all it wanted. And then once everything cooled, I welded the shell to the ring. So hopefully when I take the bolts out, it doesn't twist up like a potato chip. <laughs> this cover looks so mean. I wanna see what the axle looks like with the truss on it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It looks like an axle out of a military vehicle or a trophy truck. Nope, just a cute little pink mini truck on its way to Victoria's Secret to get some bras and panties, yeah! Because this is part one of a two parts Watts Link series, we better at least do something Watts Linky. Before I take the cover off, I want to find out where the center of the axle lands on the diff cover. It could be right in the center of the cover, but on a lot of these Ford axles, the differential itself is not centered. It looks like the center line is right here, just off center of the diff cover to the right. That's an unplanned victory. I need to put a nut on the inside of the cover for the Watts Link propeller. I was worried that the nut was going to hit the ring gear. But since it's off to the right side and the ring gear is off to the left, it should be fine. The pivot on a Watts Link propeller will be the vehicle's rear roll center. That is essentially the point that the vehicle chassis will rotate around as it leans back and forth under heavy cornering. Some say a higher roll center is better. I agree within reason. You could technically have too high of a roll center, which would create some really strange handling characteristics, but that would be hard to do. A really low roll center is a bit easier and much worse. It would cause your chassis to sway like a weeble wobble. The weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. So unless you plan to install a beefy sway bar, go for a higher roll center. I'll be mounting this propeller neither high or low. It'll be right in the middle of the axle tube. I will be installing a sway bar on this truck, so all that was probably pointless to bring up. The custom roadside bomb resistant differential cover for the pink tank is finished and ready for the Watts Link. I joke, but I'm really happy with it. It should be able to withstand any crazy driving my wife throws at it. I am waiting for some parts to build the Watts Link though, so I've got to end this one here. We will be back though with the full design and build of the Watts Link in the next one. So until then, my friends, keep moving forward.